Prime Minister Dr. Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob said future-oriented teaching and learning, PDP, should be the core of national higher education. Speaking at the National Academic Awards ceremony in Sepang last night, he said drastic changes were continuing to take place in the PDP process at all levels of formal education presently, adding that the concept of future learning initiatives was no longer something unfamiliar in the country's higher education institutions. Semakin ramai ahli sarjana keluarga Malaysia tidak kira usia dan kepakaran masing-masing sedang meneroka dan mengaplikasikan teknologi pengajaran dan pembelajaran terkehadapan agar mahasiswa kita tidak ketinggalan dengan arus pemodonan drastik dalam pendidikan tinggi. Yeah. It's the main choice and no longer the second choice for students who were not successful in academics. He added that attractiveness and quality of TVET delivery and training will be enhanced through improvement made on accreditation, recognition and certification. Ali Akademik juga perlu melengkapkan diri seiring dengan perkembangan revolusi perindustrian 4.0 yang memperkenalkan kaedah baru dan teknologi seperti kecerdasan buatan ataupun AI, pendigitalan, internet mudah alih, berkelajuan tinggi, analisis data raya, PDA dan internet benda ataupun IoT yang akan memberi kesan kepada pendidikan dan latihan. About 2 million Sinovac vaccine recipients are at risk of losing their fully vaccinated status on the 1st of April. According to Health Minister Kairi Jamaluddin, currently 2.09 million Sinovac recipients have yet to receive their booster dose. Prior to this, the deadline for Sinovac recipients to receive their booster dose before they lose their fully vaccinated status was on 28 February before it was extended to 31st March. Mengikut unjuran kita untuk seminggu lagi, uh, kita uh, KKM unjukkan bahawa mungkin akan ada 2 juta, 2 juta penerima vaksin primer Sinovac yang, uh, yang berisiko untuk hilang uh, status vaksinasi lengkap mereka pada 1 bulan April. Kairi said to encourage them to get their booster shot, discussions were also held with Singapore following an agreement between both nations to allow land cross-border travel without the need for fully vaccinated travellers to take COVID-19 pre-departure and arrival tests or be quarantined. Saya bincang uh, perkara ini dengan Menteri Kesihatan Singapura Singapore uh, also considers fully vaccinated for Sinovac to be three doses, three doses. So if you want to enjoy uh, your trip to Singapore, uh, no quarantine, then uh, you know what to do. Kairi said although the country will enter the transition to endemic beginning 1st April, the wearing of face masks is still compulsory. He also said home quarantine orders and the wearing of digital tracking devices were among procedures to be scrapped for travellers from the 1st of April. Meanwhile, Kairi said travellers who fail to undergo a professional RTK AG test for COVID-19 within 24 hours upon arrival in Malaysia could face a deportation. He said apart from that, the travellers' Maisajathra status would turn red and they would not be allowed to enter any business premises in the country. Kalau pengembara uh, tidak uh, melakukan uh, ujian RTK professional, dalam tempoh masa 24 jam sebab ujian itu mesti dibuat secara profesional sebab dia mesti dikiin ke dalam Maisjahtera dan hanya makmal yang bertauliah saja yang boleh kiin dalam sistem Maisjahtera kalau mereka tak buat dalam tempoh masa 24 jam status mereka akan tukar ke merah dan mereka tak boleh masuk ke kedai makan dan sebagainya dan yang paling penting mereka melakukan kesalahan dan boleh diusir keluar 
Kyrie said fully vaccinated travellers whose test result is confirmed to positive and are in categories one and two are required to observe the home surveillance order HSO for seven days at their accommodation. Travellers are also required to download the My Sujathra application before leaving for Malaysia, fill up the travel declaration form and report the results of the RT-PCR test conducted two days prior to their departure. A total of 1.85 million fish fry worth 900,000 ringgit was released into the country's waters yesterday to increase its fishery stock. Agriculture and Food Industries Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Ronald Kiandi, who took part in the programme at Putrajaya Lake in Precinct 2, said this was among the efforts taken in increasing the food stock and ensuring a sustainable supply of freshwater fish. The fish fry released into the lake were of the Kalah, Temole, Siakap and Lampam species. Based on the records of the Department of Fisheries, about 44.7 million fish fry worth over 50 million ringgit had been released into the waters of Peninsula Malaysia and Sarawak from 2016 to 2021. <laughs> Uh, kita juga mempromosi akuakultur antara perkara yang ditumpukan dalam dasar agro makanan negara 2.0 itu untuk to develop further di aquaculture sector di negara kita. Jadi uh, bila bercakap tentang aquaculture, ia melibatkan ternakan, stangkar, kolam, air tawar uh, dan sebagainya. Jadi uh, antara perkara yang ditekan dalam dasar agro makanan adalah untuk uh, mengimbangi uh, catch fisheries dengan aquaculture. Datuk Sri Dr. Ronald said the fish fry release such as at Putrajaya Lake was also for environmental sustainability and conservation of resources and the freshwater fish biodiversity. The Ministry of Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs, KPD and HEP, will conduct a thorough study on the issue of 63 companies found to have abused the cooking oil subsidy scheme involving unpaid taxes, totaling some 200 million ringgit. Its minister, Dato Sri Alexander Nantalingi, said his ministry will be working closely with the Inland Revenue Board, LHDN, to uncover the racket. KPHP memang sedar ada berlakunya dan kita sentiasa mengambil langkah-langkah tertentu ha, untuk kita menangani masalah ini. Ya. Jadi uh, sebenarnya itu sebagian daripada itu. Tapi saya tak nak uh, menyatakan terlebih dahulu eh, banyak sekarang kerana kebiarkan lembaga hasil dalam negeri ini buat sesiatan Dan kami akan berhubung dengan, saya, saya difahamkan, Kuat Kuasa sudah juga berhubung dengan pihak lembaga hasil dalam negeri dalam hal ini. Dan uh, bersama nanti kami akan uh, meneliti dan memperincikan uh, apa sebenarnya. Jadi uh, akan mengambil langkah-langkah yang wajar kita ambil dan sepatutnya kita ambil nanti. 57 illegal foreigners, including six children, were detained in two separate raids conducted by the Immigration Department. All of them were arrested for various offences, such as overstaying and disturbing public order. Immigration Director General Datuk Sri Khairul Zaimi Daud said in the first raid at an entertainment outlet in Kuala Lumpur, 100 people were inspected. As a result, 19 women of Thai nationality and three Vietnamese were detained for further questioning. Berdasarkan kepada semakan awal, dokumen yang dimiliki oleh mereka ini didapati bahawa tiga daripada mereka adalah warga negara Vietnam yang memegang fas rawatan sosial isteri kepada warga negara tempatan iaitu isteri kepada warga negara Malaysia uh, saya berikan uh, contohnya seperti ini uh, pas ini masih lagi sah sehingga tahun 2023 tetapi daripada serbuan dan daripada risikan yang dilakukan sebelum ini didapati mereka ini sebenarnya bekerja di uh, pusat hiburan ini sebagai uh, pegawai perkhidmatan pelanggan ataupun lebih dikenali sebagai GRO. 
The case is being investigated under Section 61C of the Immigration Act 1959-1963 for not having a valid travel document. In the second raid at a restaurant in Puchong, the department acted on public complaints of unruly and suspicious behaviours of foreigners, especially African nationals in the area. Immigration telah menerima laporan daripada uh, rakyat tempatan berkaitan dengan jumlah atau kehadiran warga negara Afrika yang ramai di restoran ini yang dijadikan sebagai tempat mereka berehat, melepak dan melakukan perkara yang menimbulkan ketidakselesaan kepada rakyat tempatan seperti bising, mabuk dan memandu kereta dalam keadaan laju. 25 Nigerian nationals, 3 Indonesians and 10 Thai women were arrested for further investigations. The body of a football academy trainee was found at 5.46 p.m. yesterday, more than 20 hours after he went missing and feared drowned after being swept away by strong currents in Sungai Ketil near Kampung Padang Temu, Baling. The victim, Muhammad Saiful Izzuddin Mustafa, 14, was found inside a sand dredger in Sungai Limau, some nine kilometres away from where he was reported missing while swimming with his four friends. According to Zone 3 Fire and Rescue Department Senior Officer Rahimir Ali, the search operation was divided into several sectors, including trying to locate on the water surface from the site where the teen went missing until the town of Baling and also through deep river diving conducted by the department's water rescue unit, PPDA. He added that the victim's family has been notified of the finding. The 14-year-old victim was a trainee for the under-14 squad at the Mokta Dahari Football Academy EMD in Gambang, Kuantan. end today's updates at noon. In our top story today, 2 million Sinovac recipients are set to lose a fully vaccinated status. Tune in to News at 10 coming up at 10pm on my free views, Saluran Berita RTM Channel 123. Now we leave you with a video showing a cast of crabs emerging near the Cuban city of Matanzas after its numbers dramatically increased during the two years of reduced traffic during the pandemic. Thank you for watching. I'm Mona Priya. Salam, Keluarga Malaysia and have a great weekend.